Cool. Well, it is a pleasure to welcome to the show. It's Virginia goalie, Ashley Vernon. Ashley, welcome to the Lax Goalie Rat Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for yeah, having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you for doing this. I'm super excited to get to chat with you to get to chat with you and talk about your lacrosse goalie career. Uh, but first I kind of want to know where it all started. Do you remember the first time you jumped into goal? Um, yeah. So I kind of had an unconventional start. Um, I started playing lacrosse when I was in first grade um, and I was a midfielder and ended up quitting lacrosse when I was in fifth grade because, um, you know, it started to get really competitive. And my parents said I either had to choose to play um, club soccer or club lacrosse. And I chose soccer and um, I came back to it in eighth grade when, um, you know, my friends were going out for the middle school team and they were like, you should come, you should do it. Um, and I uh, went in as a midfielder again and we had like a, a first string and second string team and, you know, each team would get to play a game. So the A team per se would play first and then the B team, the second team would play second. And I was consistently playing with the second team. So I was, re I was really frustrated and I'm just like super, super competitive. Um, and I went to the coach and I was like, what do I need to do to play on the first team? And she basically told me that I was not going to play in the field for them. I wasn't good enough to play in the field for them. Um, she was like, we don't have a goalie. You can try that if you want. And um, I, I just wanted to play with the first team. So I was like, I'll play half in the net with the first team um, if I could play half in the field for the first team. So at the end of the season, that was kind of like my start. And um, I hated it. <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to be a goalie at all. I tried to fight it actually. Um, but um, my freshman year of high school is actually when I really started to actually play as a goalie. Um, and, you know, my friends convinced me to go out for the high school team again. Um, and I actually borrowed the school equipment for my first year. Um, I didn't have my own stick until my sophomore year, actually. Um, so it was, it was definitely not a conventional start, but um, you know, I grew a lot of confidence. Um, my teammates were really awesome and you know, pushed me to be better. And the, uh, the head coach in my high school was actually the one who got me involved with club at the end of that season. Um, and that's kind of just took off from there. I love it. I love it. There's so much good stuff there. Um, what, what didn't you like about goalie at first? Well, sorry, you cut out a little bit. Was oh, I said, what didn't you like about goalie at first? Um, I don't, I guess that I wasn't like running around. Like I was so used mm. to right. like playing midfield and like scoring goals and stuff. Um, and I don't know. It just, I wanted to score the goals. I didn't want to save them. And eventually I kind of liked saving them more than <laughs> um, for them. So yeah, um, I kind of. Definitely is an acquired taste, but yeah, it is. It is. But this is a lacrosse goalie podcast. So you're talking with people who have that, that acquired taste. Uh, the other question I was going to ask there is a lot of times parents ask, um, ask me like, like, what is the right age to fully dedicate your kid to one sport? Right. You know, for, for you and your parents, it was, it was fifth grade. Is that what you recommend or is that what worked for you? And maybe you, you might say something else to a young girl who's kind of growing up in that, in that position. Um, well, so even though the whole thing with uh, quitting lacrosse, um, it was more of, I could either go to club for lacrosse or I could go play club for soccer doing both. Mm. It was just too much of a time commitment, but I was still playing. But you were still doing the both. Yeah. Um, I gotcha. I was just focusing more on soccer because I thought that's what I wanted to play in college yeah um as a fifth grader but um uh I don't think there's any right age to you know commit to one sport I think being well balanced and um playing multiple sports is definitely going to benefit a player um over someone who just specializes in one um for I tend to, I tend to agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you fifth grade seemed a little young for me that's why I was asking the question but yeah I, I mean I don't think there is a right a right age, but typically when you do get to high school, like, I mean, you've got to then, um, but even, even, I know, I know a lot of athletes who play college lacrosse, who are multiple athletes, multiple sport athletes in, uh, in high school, even what, what would you say that soccer added to your lacrosse goalie game? If anything? Um, I definitely, I think, um, footwork, it helped a lot with footwork. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, keeping my feet moving and um, understanding my positioning, like my body positioning in general um, and like awareness uh, on the field. 
um, just by the way, you know, the, the soccer plays that you have to kind of know where your spacing is, um, mm -hmm. much like, you know, lacrosse, um, and just being aware of like where you are in relation to the field and your teammates and, you know, how fast the ball is moving and stuff. Yeah. Love it. All right. So, so, so you finally, you make the switch over to being goalie from a field player and then like, where do you go from there? How do you go about learning how to make saves? Um, so when I first started, I did not even know how to hold a stick properly. It was pretty embarrassing. Now that I'm looking back on like pictures and videos and stuff. Um, and actually there was a senior goalie on the team who um, went on to play at uh, Boston University. And she really just took me under her wing my freshman year and taught me all like the basics, um, like how to hold a stick, how to step towards the ball. Um, we'd have like individual like goalie time where we would separate, you know, um, different positional groups. So the goalies would all work together and it, you know, freshman JV and varsity were all together. Um, and she would really just um, help me so much with everything. Um, and that definitely I attribute to um, the baseline, the foundation of, you know, my goalie career. Yeah. You know, when I was first starting out, <clears throat> whenever a shot was taken at me, like I would flinch, right? I would close my eyes. Like I would get really small, it was, which is like obviously the exact opposite of what we want to do as lacrosse goalies. Did you um, go through that problem? And if so, you know, how did you overcome that? Um, I don't think I ever did. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I, when I, you know, my first couple games uh, that I played in middle school, it was only, you know, like I think two at the end of the season. So I, I don't know if, know if I would count that as like my, my start, but um, I had those huge, like um, the softball catcher shin pads on. So it wasn't mm -hmm. really hitting my shins. It didn't really hurt that bad. Um, so I, I was never like afraid of it. Um, I just like, just wanted to get to it fast. That was kind of my mentality. Um, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And where did you grow up? Are you, are you from a, um, like a, a place that has a lot of lacrosse? Yeah, I'm from South Jersey, like right outside Philly. Okay. Um, Medford, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but. I haven't, but I'm, I'm a West Coast guy, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, you, could, you could name a lot of places in New Jersey that I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's awesome. So now you like the position, I assume. What, what is your favorite part about being a lacrosse goalie? Um, I love the fast pace um environment of it just there's so much energy around you know being a goalie and stuff um there's a lot of chaos but I think it's a good chaos and um I just love you know having to like break things down and almost like make something simple from like a chaotic situation um yeah. does that make sense it does um, yeah it's it's just I think that's cool and um you know you can't I like the fact that you can't overthink it. Um, that's kind of something I, that really I had to break through early on. Um, it was just learning that I can't overthink when I uh, have to make a save. Um, and, you know, sometimes I do fall into that uh, where I'm trying to break down, you know, every single thing that I'm doing when a goal goes in and I yeah. kind of have to take a step back and be like, okay, uh, you know, don't try to overthink it. Um, but uh, just like the fact that you can't overthink it in that situation, something so chaotic and you just have to make it simple. Um, yeah, I think it's really, cool. that is really cool. Um, I mean, you can overthink it and a lot of goalies do, uh, <laughs> but I think what you're saying is like the best goalies don't overthink it. Right. And, and that's not what you should be doing, but I know a lot of goalies that, like you said, shot goes in and now like my, my thoughts start running and I'm not focused on that next play. I'm like thinking about, Oh man, how could I let in that? that really easy shot, right? Yeah, like pulling yourself out of that kind of state. You know what I mean? Exactly. What do you do um, when you give up a goal? Do you have like a, a, a little routine you go through or like how do you move on to that next shot? Um, so first, I, I like to break down in my mind, you know, what happened and, you know, the defense gets together. We talk about it. Um, but personally, I'll replay like what happened in my head. Um, then I'll you know, to try to make the save, like an air save in the net, and then I'll go get a drink of water. I keep a water bottle in my net with me, and that's kind of like my reset. Um, that's, you know, that plays over and the next one's coming in sort of thing. Yeah. 
I like that move. It's kind of, um, I played tennis in, in, in high school and you see a lot of tennis players do that. Like if you miss a shot, right. And you hit one into the net, they'll do like the same stroke, the same ground stroke and, and just get, get that feel back. And, and that's kind of what you're doing as a goalie, right? You're just doing a rep and to that same mm-hmm. exact wherever it was like stick off stick high, you do a rep there. Um, yeah. I, I like that. That's cool. That's a good tip. Hope the, hope the young goalies out there are taking notes. <laughs> uh that's awesome um so when you uh think about you know you mentioned there was like a starter on your team that she showed you how to hold the how to hold the stick how to stand did you then start you know watching college lacrosse pro lacrosse are there any goalies that you know at that level that come to mind when you were a kid that you really enjoyed watching and learning from uh yeah so that was High, the, you know, my freshman year of high school. Um, and over that summer when I started playing clubs, when I really got into lacrosse um, and I started watching a lot of YouTube videos, um, a lot of safe highlights. Uh, I watched a lot of, you know, John Galloway um, saves, save edits. Um, yeah. And then in like the women's game, the first actual lacrosse game that I ever watched was, um, I believe it was, um, it was UNC Maryland's national championship game. And um, uh, Megan Taylor was in the net, and uh, I believe it was Kaylee Waters on the other end. And uh, you know, she split time with another keeper, and that save at it, you know, the, those saves were crazy in that game. Um, so that really got me fired up again. Um, you know, watching lacrosse, but I definitely watch a lot of YouTube videos of different goalies, um, just trying to emulate what they were doing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, watching. Uh, you know, how to make this certain type of save. And then I would go out and try to practice it on my own um, and just try to mimic it as best I could. And actually another thing that really helped me was recording myself while I was doing it. So I could see if I was making the same movements that um, the goalies that I was watching um, was, you know, correct. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, were those my save edits? The last goalie rat save edits? I think there was def. I would be shocked if there weren't some in there. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, said, right, I don't know exactly cool. which ones, but they're just, I just kind of Googled, um, you know, the cross goalie saves. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I, if lax goalie rat doesn't come up when you Google the cross goalie saves, I'm not doing, I'm not doing my job the right way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember that game specifically. Um, Meg Taylor was awesome, by the way. Um, and Kaylee Waters is awesome, by the way. And Megan Ward, I think, was the other goalie she was splitting time with. And I haven't, I haven't had her on the show yet. Uh, one day, one day. Um, but when you you talk about uh, style and kind of modeling your style after after them, how do you how would you describe your style? And maybe start by saying like how big you are. Um, I'm not very big. <laughs> you can probably tell from um, you know the games that you've seen. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm five four. But um, I definitely play an unconventional style. Um, my, you know, my coaches have always told me I play like a guy, um, you know, more kind of uh, sharp, explosive uh, movements, but not necessarily always like proper technique. Um, you know, I'll, I'll um, you know, make a split save or I'll kind of dive when I need to. Um, but, you know, I try to kind of hone in and, you know, work on my technique and stuff so that I can make them when I need to, those kind of saves when I need to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would definitely say it's um, more of like an unconventional athletic style. Yeah. It looks real athletic when I, when I, when I just, when I watch the tape and I've only watched the one game. So, but I've watched it a bunch of times. Um, and it <laughs> almost seems like you have a lot of, um, even though you're only five forward, like you still get a nice athletic bend in the knees um, going on, like in your stance. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Uh, so then, at, you know, at what point in your career did you realize, hey, I might, you know, I might be good enough to play uh, lacrosse at the at the next level? Um, I don't really know if there was ever a point where I ever like doubted myself that I couldn't. I just said I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? It's uh, I don't I don't know how to really answer this in the right like. Um, you never doubted it. You, I mean, you always, you always had that dream is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. I never kind of thought, what if like, I couldn't, I just said, I really want to do it. And I, yeah. I just went for it. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah. That's... And what does that mean? Just going for it. So then, you know, you make, you make tapes, you're contacting schools, you know, if there's a, if there's a young uh, female goalie out there listening to this right now, like what, you know, how, what would you recommend they do to get on these schools radars? Um, you know, making videos of yourself definitely is very important. Um, yeah, I've seen actually a couple of players, my younger sister went through the recruiting process recently. Um, and, you know, I, I saw a lot of her friends uh, creating Instagram pages on itself. Um, it's like, you know, just a marketing thing, like mm-hmm. you're marketing yourself to these schools. Um, you know, uh, also just emailing schools, uh, getting in contact with them um, is probably the best way to get yourself out there. Um, and I think just the main thing is, you know, stop worrying about where you are right now. I think that was the one thing that really helped me was I was never really focused on, you know, where I was in the moment, more of like where I want to go and where I'm going to go and just, you know, focused on, um, you know, working on my game and getting to that spot that I wanted to be. What, what does that mean? I'm not focused on where I'm at now. Like um, people, I've, you know, a lot of players are like, oh, I'm on like a B team right now. Um, like I'm, I'm not good. At, I'm not good enough to play, you know, whatever. Um, instead of just, you know, working on your skills and stuff and I got it. Yep. Working hard to get to. Yeah. 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 Not getting all down that, Hey, I'm not, I'm not playing for the so-and-so elites or the the A team or what have you. Um, so, um, well, awesome. So then, I mean, you eventually, uh, go play college lacrosse, um, at ECU and, um, I'm curious why you, why you chose that school and, and, um, you know, how the process was uh, there. And you played your first, I guess, two or three years there? Two years. Two years, yeah, yeah. So why, why did you choose that school? Um, I just love, like, the coaches and the team. It was a very welcoming atmosphere. Um, the coaches were awesome. And um, I just felt like there was a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and, like, you know, with academics, too, they had a very, very wide range of majors and you know, classes that I could take, um, which is another thing that I was thinking of, um, because I didn't necessarily know exactly what I wanted to do um, going into college. So uh, just having like the most options um, was really important to me. Yeah. And it is, uh, it's in North Carolina. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, was that weird being that far away from home for the first time? Uh, Yeah, it it was a little strange. Um, at the same time, I do have family uh, kind of close by in, um, you know, Raleigh and Charlotte. Um, so I was never too far away from anyone. Um, but, you know, living on your own for the first time is definitely an adjustment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember it. I mean, I'm 41 now, but I remember it when I was 18. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was yeah. awesome. Awesome times. Um, so you played a couple of years at, like I said, at East Carolina. Um and then uh, just recently, you transferred over to the University of Virginia. And um, what went into that process? Or, or why did you make the, the move? Um, I just, I didn't love the school itself at East Carolina. Um, and I realized I wasn't very happy. And I kind of, I kind of blamed it on the pandemic earlier um, and said, you know, maybe I'll be happier when or I, I'm going to be happier when, uh, you know, in-person classes start again, mm-hmm. and then it didn't. Um, so that's, that's why I decided to leave. I knew I wasn't, it wasn't the pandemic. It was more of the school itself wasn't the right place for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I decided to transfer and just went into the portal. And at that point, you just start, you know, your recruiting process starts over again. You just contact schools and see, you know, who responds. And yeah, that's and Virginia, Virginia responded and they did. Yeah. And then how does that work? So then you take like a, an official visit. I mean, it's just, it's the recruiting process all over again. It's literally the exact same thing all over again. Um, yeah. I went, you know, went on some visits with my mom. Uh, we took a couple weekend uh, trips to different schools and um, eventually I just real or I just narrowed down my list of schools to about three that I knew I like, I could really picture myself being at, um, you know, all for different reasons. And um Eventually, I just came to the decision uh, for the University of Virginia because I am uh, I am a pre med student, and uh, they have a teaching hospital on campus. Um, nice. So that's 
you know, big plus pretty good situations. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, before well we, academic. before say again, I said as well as academics. So, yeah. 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 Great. Great academics at, at UVA. Um, before we talk about UVA, you mentioned something that, that I probably should be asking all the college kids that I've been interviewing um, about the pandemic year. Uh, I mean, what, and I haven't been, so that, that's unbelievable. But what was it like for you? I mean, your, your season was canceled, right? And, and I mean, not even just lacrosse. Now, like the pandemic kind of threw a wrench in everybody's plans, but I'm curious how it was for you having, you know, something like college lacrosse and your whole, you know, second year or first year of college pretty much altered. How was that experience for you? It was very difficult. Um, it was a very emotional couple of days when we had you know, our season canceled. A lot of meetings, um, you know, with our team, the coaches, and um, it was just, it feels like a fever dream. You know, we've, we've talked about it with, you know, my teammates from East Carolina and teammates I have now at um, UVA, and everybody just says the same thing. It's, it's not, it doesn't feel like it happened. Like, it doesn't feel real. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was crazy and it was really, really was an emotional time. Um, but, you know, even then we had like our teammates to lean on. And I think that's how, you know, we were able to get through it. Um, you know, we've had, we had uh, like Zoom meetings together. Um, we'd have check-ins and just ways to kind of stay in touch. Um, and I really do think that helped a lot. Yeah. To get through that. Yeah, I bet. Ironically for me, because I live pretty far away from, like a lot of my college friends and I'm even good friends with a lot of my high school friends, ironically, in a way it put us in closer contact because like now these zoom meetings like became a thing, right? They were never really a thing before that. And it gave us this opportunity to like, Hey, all get on a call together and chat and catch up. And it was, it was we made the best of the situation, but like you said, it was, it was a, an emotional uh, wrench thrown into everyone's lives. So I'm glad you were able to lean on your teammates to, uh, uh, to get through that. And I imagine it's like that for you in many scenarios, right? Are there other instances in your life where you have leaned on your teammates for help? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, you know, I'm having even not, you know, to the extent of a national or global pandemic, but, um, you know, I'm having a bad day um, or, you know, had a bad grade on a test or something. You're just, right. you know, life isn't going my way. Um, being able to you know, talk to a teammate and, um, you know, feel that support from them is really something that, you know, gets you through the tough times, um, pretty much in all aspects of life yeah. in general. This is the great thing about being on a team. Um, exactly. you always have something there for you. Yep. Um, and you're there for others as well, I imagine. Right. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it works both ways. Right. And that's kind of part of being a leader is that, you know, not only are you going to have those days where you need others, you need to lean on others, but you're there when people need to call you and say, Hey, I got a bad grade, a bad grade on this. I flunked this test and I'm really pissed. Right. So I imagine it goes both ways. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you just transferred in to Virginia in, in January, mid-year transfer, um, which is not yeah. as common. And, you know, I'm curious how that was for you because in my head, you know, short amount of time you're with the team right? Like you, you don't get that fall ball experience where maybe I can get to get to know some of the girls and get acclimated a little bit. Um, how was that experience for you coming in, you know, in, in what, in January and now it's February and you're, you're starting and playing in games already? Yeah, it was actually an incredibly smooth transition. Um, the team is just amazing. So like incredibly welcoming. And, you know, I, I was obviously nervous coming in. I didn't know what you know, they would think or how they would react and stuff, but it was so like reassuring to me. Um, and so nice to just have such an easy transition in, um, you know, people reached out before I even got there, introduced themselves. Um, and, you know, even when I was here, you know, people were texting me, come out, like do this, do that. Um, mm -hmm. and just like really made me feel welcome, um, and a part of the team from day one. Um, so that was, that was really easy. That's awesome. So, That's great. That's great that they that they made it so smooth, uh, like made made it so seamless for you. Was the was the um, I imagine that the expectation was not that hey, Ash, come to Virginia, you're going to start, right? Like I imagine it's hey, come to the team and we'll see 
we'll see what happens. Am I right in that? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Um, I mean, even in general too, like there's no guarantee. I mean, you know, you've, you've played college lacrosse. There's no guarantee that you're ever going to start the next game or you're ever going to play in the next game in general. So it, it resets every week or even if you don't have a game or if you have multiple games a week, every couple of days, um, mm -hmm. you know, every practice is a new opportunity and you just gotta, gotta dig and, you know, fight for that spot, every practice and every game the minute you get on the field. Totally. And a lot of people ask me like, what, what should I do if I'm the backup? And it's like, you know, just keep working hard and be ready for your opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you, the starter has a bad game or, or there's a penalty or, you know, you get injured, heaven forbid. Right. I mean, that's your opportunity. And, and sometimes <clears throat> if you're ready, you take that opportunity and you run with it. Um, but how was it? So, you know, you don't have that much chance to earn the starting role. And I, and I'm, I'm curious, like how it all unfolded. Did you, you play really well in practice? I, I mean, I try not to focus on, you know, what was, what I was doing in each individual play, kind of like what we talked about earlier about moving yourself from um, overthinking things. And yeah. I just, you know, put out as best as I put out my, uh, my skills and stuff as best as I could play as hard as I could. And, um, you know, just grinded and was hoping for the best pretty much. I love it. I love it. Well, I've got some tape of the, uh, of the, of the game you guys just played against Maryland. Could I, um, could I share my screen and we could talk about some of these saves? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a great game by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to hang on. Let me make our faces just a little bit bigger. Never mind. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna. I'm, we're just gonna watch the play, and then I'll ask you some questions about it. Team also had the speed. I think they've been toe to toe early on here. It's it's not the speed of the game. So I think this is the first save of the game. And my my first question is, there's a lot less saves in women's lacrosse than in men's lacrosse, right? I mean, here we are. Like it's one one fifty six left in the first quarter, five to four. Um, and this is the first thing. And there maybe there's an, maybe there's one I missed, but I think the question is still applicable. But you know what? You know, as as a goalie for me when I played, like I love to get that first save, and I, I was a little bit nervous until like I got that first touch. Um, do you feel the same way? And kind of what happens when you know you get your first save, one fifty six left in the first? Um, I mean, getting the first save definitely builds momentum. Um, it gives you confidence and everything uh, that. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it just happens. You don't make the first couple. Um, you just try to focus on the next one. I think that's what I did. Just roll in with this it. Situation. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just roll with it. <laughs> try to you know, every, every, uh, every shot's a new opportunity for a save. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So here kind of, we talked about that. Um, and it's not, it's not great high def quality, high def quality. Uh, but here's that kind of that athletic knee bend that I was talking about that you see with a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, you see in, in, in all great goalies, I think, but it's a little more pronounced on the men's side, but that's an awesome stance. And I love that. And you, like you said, you're only five, four, but yet you're still down and ready um, to attack the shot. Um, it looks like you've got your top hand, like a little bit forward. Is that intentional or is that just something that's going on here? I, I've never really noticed. Um, I, I've never uh, you know, thought about it. I've, I, th I guess that's just some, the way I stand. No worries. No worries. I know a lot. I mean, I've talked to a lot of goalies about it and they said that they do that because uh, when the shot comes, they have this tendency to like bring it in just a little bit. Like it's a natural reaction and, and that's what they do and it works for them. So I was just curious if that was something you were intentionally doing or, or, or not. It sounds like that's the way you said I wasn't it. really aware of it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Learn something new on this podcast. Yeah, um, so this shot, the girl runs down. She's pretty, I don't know, pretty well defended. Are you, you know, when someone takes a shot like this and then she's like maybe what, two meters inside the eight meters, like six meters, six meters away. Mm -hmm. At this point, are you reading her, her body language for the shot or are you like in a purely react mode, see where the shot goes and go get it? Um, I try to never look at the body. Actually, I look at the top of the stick um, and try to read it off, uh, you know, the release. I think I feel like reading the or once they start getting in closer, 
like looking at the player's body um, is it will throw you off more um, with those enclosed shots. So it's just pure reaction um, watching the top of the stick. Definitely in that case. Interesting. All right. So only looking at the top of the stick right here and it's kind of so blurry. You can't even see it, but like kind of, she releases it here. It's a high yes. shot. Boom. You explode up with a nice step uh, right on it. And there you go. All right, cool. Nice save. Um, one fifteen. Here we go. Round, she gets it. She's everywhere. Been so fun to watch and have on her team. And spot on there was Ashley Vernon with this. Love that save. Yeah. So this, if you're just listening to the audio, the girl, they kind of do a little give and go, and she comes around from X, um, and throws a fake. And then boom, stuffed her. Love it. I don't know if you want to add anything else on that. I just love one-on-one -on -one saves. <laughs> anything to um, add there? No, I just, I really tried to just hold my pipe on that. Um, not to bite at the fake too much. Um, also, you know, I did drop a little bit to kind of bait her because I knew she was going to come up. Um, I knew by the way she was, you know, holding her stick that it was not, she wasn't going to go down low. Um, so I just tried to hold high um, and kind of bait it a little bit uh, just to get her to shoot a little earlier. But yeah. What about the way that she's holding her stick tells you that she's not going low? Um, I knew she wasn't going to shoot right away because uh, she kind of, she curled under, um, which when a player releases, they usually keep their hands open to shoot. Uh -huh. um, so I, I was able to see that. Um, and you know, read this, she was not going to release on that. So she, because she was like sort of closing off her wrist, you knew it was going to be a cradle. Yeah, or a she, was fake. Wrapping, she was wrapping the, her stick a little. Um, uh -huh. So instead of a shot coming in like this, it was coming in like this. Um, and, you know, you can't release with the ball, uh, the head of the stick like this. So Right, right. Yeah, you don't have to be a physics major to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> this move right here, this little cradle, I see women goalies do this all the time. Is that, is that like, you've got, you see what I'm saying? Like, you've got it right here and you kind of do this little like loop. I don't even know what you call it. Um, have you noticed that? The spin? Um, yeah, the spin. There know. you go. That's, that's what we're going to call it, the spin. Yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of something I've always done, like almost a like, comfort thing, like a reset. Yeah. Um, you know, some, some goalies tap the pipe, which is kind of a, a bad habit. But, you know, I just, I spin my stick when I get it, um, kind of reset it, reset the pocket. Yep. I like it. No, the goalie on the other side too, Emily Sterling, I've had on the podcast and um, she does it. She does it as well. If you, if you watch this, this thing. Uh, all right. 124. This is a cool save. Hang on a second. Let me get this. Smaller. Aggressiveness right now. Putting some pressure on the ball handlers. Cornelia has stopped point blank. Not once, but twice. Boom. Not once, but twice. I love it. Um, I mean, a one-on-one -on -one save, and there's actually a lot more of these saves in the women's game just because of where the shots are taken. There's, there's so much closer, but, but this one starts, she starts like top center. And, you know, we talked about earlier in this conversation, you know, your footwork and, and learning a lot of that from soccer. And you could see like, you know, maintaining good positioning when a girl is sweeping can be kind of challenging. How do you, um, how do you think about that? Like, when do you move from your arc? So I, uh, I think about it when the girl passes my shoulder um, in the direction that she's going is when I start to take a step. Um, that's the way I was taught um, by my, my goalie coaches in, uh, when I started, because um, that, you know, that keeps you in the right position. Um, and then in general, keeping the shooter kind of at your sternum. Um, if there was like a, a line that went straight from the center of your chest out, um, that's you know where the shooter should be and that's kind of a good way that i i visualized um staying in the right position yeah so if we imagine like this this sort of line shooting out from your right shoulder in this case like as soon as she gets past that line then you take a step and adjust right yeah yeah yes correct yeah awesome and then she ends up driving in and gets all around 
uh, the defense and she's right in the crease and even throws like a little fake right there. And, and you got to honor that fake, right? You go for it. And then she, sh then she stuffs her <laughs> right, in, right in the stick. And she ends up getting the rebound, uh, picking it up and boom, guess who's there? Stuff number two. I love, I love that play so much. Thank uh, you. I have questions about the rules. Can you like in the women's game, can you, if I have one foot in the crease, can you as the goalie scoop that ball up? Um, I would have to keep running out of the crease. Uh, so the reason I didn't keep running through is because she already had the ball in her stick. Um, and, you know, me going forward more would have put myself out of position. So uh, I held back on that. But a goalie can get like run out of the crease and get the ball. You just can't scoop the ball and get back like take another step back into the crease. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. So if you were to scoop it up right here, you'd essentially have to leave the crease and run somewhere else. You can't scoop it up with one foot in and bring your other foot back in. Correct. What about, can you drag it back in? You cannot. Um, that would be a cover. Um, cannot. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. But you, so it gets a little confusing. If someone, if another player is uh, four meters away or more, then you can do that, but covering it when someone is, you know, within, uh, maybe it might even actually be two meters away, um, that would be considered a cover and you get called for that. Got it. So if even, even if the ball's in the crease. Oh, the ball's in the crease. You can, you can cover. That's like, you can cover. Okay. We're talking about when it's outside of the crease. Outside of the crease. Um, you're playing by the field player rules and that would be a cover. Yeah. Got it. All right. Thank you. Um, there's just a lot of nuances in the women's game. And cause I've never coached uh, female lacrosse. I like, I get confused all the time. So yeah. Um, all right. So that was 124, 350. The opposite end of the field and Vernon makes the save. I noticed you got um, sweatpants on here. Tucked into the socks. That's a great look. Love that look for yeah. the lacrosse goalies. Yeah. Do you always go with that? I do. I just, I, I'm really a lot more comfortable with that. I don't know why. Um, it just keeps, I feel like it keeps the sweatpants out of the way. Um, yeah. In general. And it looks so cool. And it looks cool, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, do you wear any pads underneath for the legs? No, um, no leg pads. I, well, right now I have one shin guard that I have on one leg because I keep getting hit in the same spot and it's, it's pretty banged up right now. So we're just trying to protect it, but yeah, usually no shin guards either. Yeah. Well, you end up taking this one off the leg. I, it looks like, right? Do you remember this? Yes, I do. <laughs> Is that the thigh, inner thigh? Um, that was uh, off of like the inside of my calf. All right. You got a it, bruise. Like, down, this, down. this game wasn't yeah. that long ago. You got a bruise there right now. <laughs> Uh, yes, <laughs> I, <do. laughs> yeah. I believe great. it was off like right at the corner of the shin guard that um, I have on. Oh, this of course. So Whenever you wear like a little shin head guard head. to protect like one little area, it'll hit you in some in some little tiny area that's not covered, you know? Yeah, it was like so, half on the shin guard, half off. It was like this. OK, so the that way happens. it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So on these on these uh, shots, so she ends up shooting it like outside of the fan right out so mm -hmm. she's at a really low angle um do you play these like stance wise do you would you play, it looks like you play this identical as if she was shooting uh top center what i mean by that is i seen some goalies like go wall right where they just kind of stand up and like and just and just take up that space but it looks like you're still in an athletic position reacting to the shot am i right uh yeah so i mean I, I was really just looking for that outside shot, but I, I wanted to definitely stay in my stance in case she did feed that across. Um, oh, I didn't yeah. want to just completely shut off, you know, like turn completely uh, to one side and, you know, have my back to the rest of the play. It's kind of how I play a little bit with my, um, my trailing foot always in the middle um, so that I can make, you know, that quick move back to the center of the net if the feed does come in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome. That's a great save. All right. Um, I think the next one is yours. That was actually a pretty nice move by this attackman. 
Um, but she gets in and it's pretty much like, this is, this is crazy. Cause this is like where the majority of girl goalies take their shots for, or get their, get their shots from. It's just right there, right on the, you know, right on the crease. So um, I don't know if there's anything special on this one. It's kind of the same scenario where, you know, you just kind of match sticks with her and I don't know, does it catch you in the leg or you get it with your stick? I don't, I can't really tell from the video. Um, I got it off uh, my hand and it ricocheted off to the side. Um, yeah, so. pretty, pretty strong, but yeah, your hand, your hands are right there and yeah, the ball goes all the, all the way over here. Um, that's pretty crazy. All right. Uh, 422. Libby May looking for some help. There to retain possession. Still plenty of time. Smith now cuts towards goal through the defense. Trying to get a shot off. She does. There's the little twirl, right? You see it? Boom. Yeah. Boom. There, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like on this one, talking about this save. So if you just got the audio going, she drives out. Um, cuts back to the middle and then she still has it in her right and kind of like, you know, tries to do a cross body shot with the right. But it looks like at that point, you take a step out, right? And, and sort of cut down the angle. And are you, you know, reading the play there and noticing that, all right, like she's very limited in her options to shoot, right? So I'm gonna come out and sort of take up a little bit more space or what's going through your head on this save? Um, I'm not sure if I took a step forward more so like taking a step over I was just uh you know what I especially like in close um I really try to keep my feet moving since you know they they do move across the crease a lot faster uh than they do when they're at you know the, the eight or the 12 um so just I guess keeping I was keeping my feet moving in that situation trying to stay um in good positioning where I could you know give myself the best opportunity to make the save mm -hmm. um and then just watching her stick um, seeing that release and just going for it. Yeah. It's a great save. I, I talk a lot, I talk a lot about, you know, with low saves, there's kind of this debate in the lacrosse goalie community about whether you, you know, whether you go to your knees or whether you stay on your feet, pros and cons to each. Are you, uh, like on low saves, do you always go to your knees or is this just kind of one of those things? Like I saw the ball, I went for it. Um, I mean, I do both. Um, it depends on the shot. If, if it's coming like coming in hundred miles an hour and I know that, you know, it's, I just have to get there, then I'll throw myself down. You know, I will, you know, take, make a low save on my knees. Um, but, you know, sometimes I do stay up. It just kind of, I think depends more on the situation um, and you know, what, what kind of shots coming in. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So that was. Trying to get a shot off. She does. Vernon capitalizes on it. Hey, save. I, that's, I mean, that's, that's such an awesome save. Uh, I mean, to me, like, I see a lot more male goalies play that way, right? And maybe that's what we were talking about, like, at the beginning. So the shot's, like, you know, low. I mean, I just posted a, 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 a slow motion save of the Georgetown goalie, Owen McElroy, making this exact save where like you kind of drop a little bit, you get your, your knee behind it, right? But your stick's also right there. But, but the hips are, are low. They're on the first floor, um, like nice and low. Great save. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Did we get a twirl? Oh, yeah. Probably. There it oh, is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Well, here's a, here's a question I have for you. Mm -hmm. You just made the save two seconds ago, right? And like, everyone's gone. Yeah. Defense, offense, like in, in the men's game, like there'd be two attackmen right here, like staring at the goalie, like trying to pressure the goalie. What, mm -hmm. what's going on here? Like what, how, why, why is that? Why is that the case in the women's game? That's another thing I don't quite understand. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure exactly why. More but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, 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 I definitely do. Um, I don't know. I guess, um, you know, they're you want to try and uh, they're trying to lock off the uh, the clear, so you just limit the amount. I mean, in that one, Cortland got open um, pretty easily, but um, just trying to defend on a ride more so than trying to get the ball back in 
um, out of the keeper stick. Yeah. Is in general, I think what people do more often. But yeah. I'm not really sure. Okay. Well, a lot of young goalies have trouble with the clearing game as like they don't have the stick skills and the ability to, you know, make a 20 yard pass if they need to. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just kind of interesting to not only watch the saves, but watch the clears. And, and so a lot of times when I watch the women's game, like, like I said, two or three seconds after you make the save, like nobody's on you. You got so much time, be patient, right? Like it'd be as, be as patient as possible. Just kind of slowly walk it up the field and then look for an open um, defenseman or, or, or midi. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Also, another difference I know between the men's and the women's game is um, I believe men have six seconds to clear. You have six seconds. You can stay in the crease with the ball. Four, four seconds. Four seconds. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The women's game has 10 seconds. Yep. Um, you're allowed to stay in the crease. Um, so. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if that plays a part of it, but. It does. Yeah. 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 Because it's got to be a lot quicker. And um, actually, let's continue to watch this play because it's the exact same play. They, they end up stripping the girl that you just threw the ball to. And here she comes one on nothing, one on one with the defender and takes a shot right there. Hey, what happened? Working her way in, lets it go, and a nice save, save by Ashley Vernon. Much and that's such a huge save, right? Because it could be, you know, your, your team just made a bad play, right? And, and, and lost the ball. And it could be such like a momentum swing if, if, if they score a goal on that, right? And then you make that and you make that save. Um, that's it. That, that's the play I wanted to, wanted to take a look at. I don't know if you have anything else to add on that. No, not really. It's just um, just another save. Yeah. What, what are you saying right here? Um, oh, we, I was just trying to organize the defense. There was a girl open um, pretty close down to the crease. Um, and it was just calling out names to tell people mark the direction mark, where to go. Yeah, mark, mark her yeah, up like right here. Mark up. Yeah. yeah, making sure because they were starting to come in. Um, they would start off uh, the out of bounds plays pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so we had to reset pretty fast. Yeah. It looks like you got the throat guard tape going. Do you have like letters, initials there? Like, what do you, what do you put, um, what do you put on there? I do. I have uh, two people's initials on their numbers. Um, one of them was a teammate of mine that uh, passed away my freshman year of high school. Um, and the other one is, um, you know, a boy I went to high school with um, who just recently passed over winter break. Um, he played baseball actually. Um, and he passed from uh, cancer uh, battled pretty much all of middle school and high school and just really like an inspirational person um, to everyone in my town uh, and a lot of athletes uh, so just I did to remind myself to play for them that's great that's great I'm glad you're able to honor them um, in that in that tragedy so thank you thank you for sharing that um, 556 it seems like a weird transition now to go back to talking to lacrosse <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing that he sights, gets around Gordon, and a nice save. And Imposed defense, even though you need to be extra aggressive trying to get the ball back. Katie sights, gets around Gordon, and a nice save. That is a nice save. Uh, so she sweeps in, right? And this is another thing that's so different about men's and women's lacrosse. Like, this girl would get, if this was a men's game, she would get, you know, she would get hit pretty hard. But, like, what, <laughs> from, like, defense, like, what? What can you, you can't do anything, right? Like once she's driving down that lane, can I step in and take a charge or no, I have to let her keep going. Um, so what, you know, the defenders could do um, if they're like close enough and stuff, you have to lead with your stick. So um, what you would do is just kind of lead with your stick out like this. And then once you got in front of her, kind of almost get your body positioning behind it. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, it, it also happens very fast. Um, so, uh, but that would be the way to do it so you got to get the oh. stick there first and then once the sticks in that position then i can kind of get my body yes so if she it. just ran in without leading her stick then that would be a shooting space uh -huh. um and they would get an eight meter on that um but you know i know in the guys game they they just you know deck them lower the shoulder yeah <laughs> and not yeah, to mention like you get you know once you get within six yard or six feet, like there, you can get hit, right? So like, yeah. uh, you 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 end up with some bruises anyway. None of that is needed because you make another very nice save going low, get the body low, drop down, and I guess here because the ball is in the crease, you can clamp you can clamp the back of it, scoop it up, do the twirl, and then try and find an open person. 
Well, awesome. You guys don't end up winning that game, but, but thank you so much for, for going through that. That was, that was really fun. Yeah, that was, that was cool. Yeah. All right, Ashley. Um, this has been tons of fun. Um, I wish you a lot of luck and success in the, in the upcoming season. Um, I mean, we're recording this February 24th. I don't know when it will come out, but we're definitely mid season and uh, yeah, good luck in, in the upcoming season with, with the, with the Virginia Cavaliers. Thank you. Appreciate go Hoos. Go Hoos, right? Is that, is that what we say? Yeah. Yeah. Go Hoos. Awesome. If you had to leave the goalies out there with, uh, with one piece of advice, one final piece of advice, what would that be, Ashley? Um, keep grinding, keep going at it and just have fun with it. If you're not having fun while you're playing, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Love it. Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.